Do you want to learn more about foods grown with genetically modified organisms? We talked to consumers to find out what topics they most wanted to know about in order to cut through the confusion. Then we gave them the chance to meet with an expert to ask the tough questions. Here's what one consumer wanted to know about GMOs. So you're genetically modifying this for what benefit? What is the outcome? It's been really difficult for me to make a decision on GM or genetically modified food. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to getting out of today is understanding what is GM? What is genetically modified? When you're talking about GM crops, genetically modified, what's, what's happened is that those crops have an extra gene typically, or maybe one or two genes that have been added to their genome, which is the sum of their DNA. It's really all about making crops more functional and better to withstand environmental stress and produce more food. You can think of the GM crop like an iPhone and you can think of the gene that might be put into a crop as an app for that. So um, really, you're not changing anything fundamental about the crop plant, and it's just like your phone. It's still a phone, but if you add an app, maybe you can find your favorite store more easily or do other interesting things that you couldn't do before. And so the interesting apps that we want to put in crop plants are things for you know, resisting drought or resisting insects or maybe tolerating some kind of climate change. Okay, Danielle, I'm going through the grocery store. What crops that are used in the food that my family eats are actually genetically modified? If you look by acreage, the most common would be soybeans, okay. and then after that, a maize, which we commonly call corn, okay. and then cotton and canola. So those are the four big ones. And then in terms of horticultural crops, there are papayas and squash. But otherwise, that's most, it. That's it. Most of the things that you see in the grocery store that are whole foods are probably not GM. So unless I'm buying fresh corn then, I probably don't need to worry about GM crops in the produce aisle. I would argue that you don't need to worry about GM crops in the produce aisle anyway okay. because they have been proven to be safe and nutritious and uh, perfectly fine for, for people to eat. So Other moms have said to me that they're worried about their children getting allergies from eating of foods made with GM crops. Is there any truth to that? No, there's not. And in fact, there's a lot of study done uh, before a gene is ever put into a plant and, and a GM crop is made. They'll look carefully at that gene, at the protein product of that gene. And so all of the currently marketed genetically modified crops have been thoroughly tested for any possible allergenicity and there is absolutely no uh, basis for that. Scientific consensus is that GM crops don't pose any risk um, compared to um, conventional crops and so um, as a mom I think I would go with the experts because they really know um, what they're talking about and they've studied this for a long time. This was a lot of fun and I really appreciate the opportunity. I think that if anybody who has questions about GM had an opportunity to share a cup of coffee with Daniil. They would understand and know that GM crops are good for our environment, they're helping farmers, they're keeping our food costs low, um, and all in all, they're not hurting anybody. My name's Colleen Cecil. I'm from Chico, California. I'm a wife, a mom, and the executive director of the Butte County Farm Bureau. I, uh, I have a, a two-year-old and a five-month-old, um, so uh, going to the grocery store is an important task to feed uh, my growing family. Um, and uh, I um, want to look for foods that my family likes. Hi, my name is Danielle Jamison McClung. I'm married and the mother of an eight-year-old son. I am the associate director of the UC Davis Biotechnology Program. What we like to do is help our students learn about the different parts of science that are important for getting research out into the public domain, so learning about regulations and laws and how science impacts society. And um, that's what I do.